Here's the intake I'm going to be running on my Oldsmobile. It's an open plenum. This one was actually fitted by with a cone from Mondello's. It's supposed to help uh, get a better uh, fuel air disbursement. And I'm going to try something new with this. This is a rough aluminum on here. I'm going to go ahead and clear coat this thing and see how that holds up to the elements. It'll be the first time I've ever tried that. Here is the motor I took out of the boat. This here was a bone stock 350 rocket out of a 1974 Cutlass. And it had about 100,000 miles on it. And I switched it from this car to that car and then finally ended up in the boat. Basically all I did with this is I put a double roller uh, timing chain underneath that timing cover. And I put a high pressure high volume pump on in that huge oil pan. And I ran this motor for like seven or eight years in this boat just beating the living snot out of it and it still runs. You can see it's got a big old oil pan on it. Uh, I actually made that and we'll be taking a, a good look at that later. And I'm going to pull the oil pump out of there and this is what all I'm going to be using off that. Here's a look at the boat. It's quite a mess right now. I've got a lot of cleaning and polishing to do here to get this thing ready for the new engine. This looks like a whole lot of work here, but uh, the trick to any project is just take your time, get something done every day, don't kill yourself. If you work too hard, you actually get burned out. So you really got to pace yourself with these things. And if you notice over the course of this engine build, um, it's been a couple of months now already. So here's how it looks out of the box, and I'll go ahead and tape it off and clear coat it. Got her all masked off here. Um, highlighted my Edelbrock logo. Here's the paint I'm going to try. It's Rust Oleum Crystal Clear Enamel. It's supposed to be good up to 200 degrees um, Fahrenheit. I don't know that this motor will ever see 200 with the uh, cooling setup I have on it now. We eventually go to a closed cooling system, but uh, right now I'm just running lake water through it. Here it is after a light application of clear coat. It actually looks like, uh, almost like I painted it silver or gray or something now. We'll see what it looks like when it dries and uh, get a couple more coats on it. I'm highlighting blood out a little bit. Stuff happens. I figure if I put enough coats on it, um, it'll be smooth instead of being very porous, so I'll be able to wipe it off. This is the manifold after the first coat has dried overnight. Thought I'd add this little part to this uh, video in case you're only going to watch the intake manifold painting video. Is I'm running this manifold on a cylinder head where I plug that exhaust crossover. That'd be for an EGR, you can see that there's no provision for one on here. Or like a heat style choke. And I'm also going to run a black off plate on that. And the reason why I mention that is if, if you're going to be running exhaust uh, through this thing, it's going to get really hot. It's probably going to screw up this clear coat. But I am not. So we'll see how long this coating actually lasts. Here it is after coat number two. The pores are actually starting to get filled in a little bit better now. I'll probably put at least two more coats on this thing. Here's the intake after about five coats completely dried. It's actually smooth to the touch now, so it should be pretty easy to wipe off. And uh, we'll see how she holds up to the heat.